the Buddha's analysis of suffering and stress, that the suffering and the stress are in the clinging, the cling to things that we desire. It sounds like a description of an addiction. Things we want, but we know they have a bad effect. Or sometimes we don't care. But there's something inside that says, I've got to have this. Which means we're going to be dealing some, with some pretty deeply rooted attachments. That's why we need strong concentration, strong discernment. That's not afraid to look into these things. Confident in the conviction that the Buddha didn't know what he's talking about, that if you can get past these attachments, past these clingings, then there would be happiness. And so as with any addiction, there have to be stages in which you pull away from those things. You give the mind alternative things to focus on. This is one of the reasons why we do concentration, but also why we practice generosity, why we practice virtue, why we try to develop goodwill. Because goodwill is not a theme in the mind that feels really good to be thinking. The Buddha recommends it as a medicine for all kinds of hindrances, not just ill will, but also restlessness, anxiety, and doubt. That gives you something good to focus on, something good to feel, feed on, an alternative thing to cling to. So as long as the mind is going to cling, give it something good to cling to, and something that it can stay with and it will pull it away eventually. But it's the discernment that sees through things. Why you go for these things? What's the allure? I don't know how many people tell me, so I understand the drawbacks of these things, but I keep coming back to them. Sensuality is a big one. As John Fuang said, that's the most addictive of all the addictive drugs. And simply understanding the drawbacks is not enough. You can look into, well, why do I go for it? What's the allure? And you have to dig down pretty deep in order to find it. But recognize you are dealing with an addiction, and so there's certain things you have to stay away from so that you don't have the addiction flare up again. Feed the mind on concentration. Feed it on goodwill. Feed it on the practice of generosity and virtue. So it doesn't come to its thoughts of sensuality quite so starved. When you're coming with a sense of fullness, sense of well-being, it's a lot easier to see and to admit where the allure was. Because often it will be things that you're kind of embarrassed about. But you can't let your embarrassment get in the way of your discernment. Because otherwise you're going to continue being trapped for who knows how long. So treat yourself as a, as a patient who has an addiction. Be careful about what kind of foods you do eat, what kinds of foods you don't eat. This applies, of course, not only to food for the body, but food for the mind. Especially food for the mind. And remember, that you're going to be digging into some things that you really are attached to. But you have to do it with confidence that it's going to be worth it in the end.